Okay. Are we there yet? I don't see it live yet. There we go. There we go. All right. Makes me happy. Hello, folks. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, no matter where you are around the world. Look, it even said that I went live. There, there it is right there. Welcome to Kilroy's world. Welcome to my world. I'm Al Forte. I'm um, going to be talking today about, um, what am I going to be talking about? Didn't you, didn't you look at what I put? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> parallel circuits. Parallel, it's parallel series circuits. We've been talking about, um, about series circuits and now we're going to talk about parallel circuits um, the difference being that instead of the resistors being one right after the other they're the more common circuits that we use all the time we don't even think about it uh, any single appliance that we plug into the wall we're actually applying applying a uh, um, a load or a resistor in in parallel we're tapping on to the to the to the voltage so um, with that being said what I'm going to discuss is uh, the two the two documents that I have here this one and that one and then there's only going to be one lab which which will be so let me bring this up which will be basically um, putting some resistors together in in parallel making some calculations and uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, you know, depending on the, and then th here we're going to calculate and then here we're going to measure. So, uh, you know, same old thing, just basically uh, a different process or, or a different uh, uh, procedure. So with that being said, let's talk about um, this, this uh, uh, document here, which is basically parallel circuits it's uh well, wait a second is it 12.2 no it's 12.1 i think i got them out of order yeah here's 12.1 let's let's put that in order put that one in the back and uh so a parallel circuit is is basically it differs from a series circuit in that a parallel circuit you have your loads these bulbs here are loads and they're coming right off of the power and a series circuit is one after the other. They're not, they're not plugged in directly to the power. They get power from the, from the rest of the circuit, basically. And some differences uh, in the current, the current flows all the way through. It's the same current that flows all the way through the circuit in a series circuit. In a parallel circuit, each, each part of the, of the circuit has its own current going through it. Yeah, the total current at, at, in the circuit would be the, the, the cumulative sum of each individual circuit in each leg of, or each individual um, uh, current in each part of the circuits or each leg of the circuits. Um, hey, Dan, I see you too, man. Let me, let me put this on so I can kind of hear people because um, I, don't, I don't hear them unless somebody says something and I have to look over there to see it. Um, how are you doing, Dan? Uh, good, good to see you here, man. Um, let, me, uh, let me mute this out because I don't want to hear myself talking. You know how, how annoying that can be. So, so in series, talking about parallel, in series, circuits, components are placed one after another, like I mentioned. And in parallel, the circuits, or all of the components, are connected to the power supply. Parallel circuits are very common. Like I said, everything you plug in is a parallel circuit, um, pretty much around the house. You know, every single, every single place that you go into the wall, you know, you're getting 12, or 12 volts. You're getting 120 volts out of that wall, you know, for your TV, for your computer, for your 3D printer, for your, you know, whatever. Um, that's that's a, a that's a parallel connection, um, and if you think about it this way, each each component or each each TV or each printer or each computer or or whatever each light draws its own current, and the total current of the house is is the sum of those 
individual currents. Um, so parallel voltage. So each component of the parallel circuit receives the same voltage. Each component is connected to the voltage power supply, like we're plugging, you know, into into the wall, that like like this shows it here. Um, in in each series circuit, each component has a portion of the source voltage, basically dropped on it. You know, it splits up the voltage uh, in in a series circuit. Remember how we had different resistors. And depending on the size of the resistor, the amount of voltage that fell in each one of those resistors, well, in, in parallel circuits, that's not the case because you're directly plugging into the, to the, to the main source voltage. So the, the drop, the voltage drop across that particular load or that particular resistor is the source voltage. So, um, so basically there's no voltage drop per se in, in a sense because it's, it's, it all falls on the particular item. Uh, the components in the circuit are connected in parallel, as you can see here on the right. Uh, a refrigerator gets 120 volts. A microwave gets 120 volts. You know, it, you don't plug the microwave into the refrigerator into the wall, which would be a series circuit at that point. You plug the refrigerator into the wall, you know, and, and the microwave. Then both of them are connected in parallel to that 120 volts. So what about the current? What, what about the current? And it's actually, it's a lot simpler to think of it um, when you're thinking about parallel circuits, about the current itself. Um, but the cumulative current, just like in your home, is, is the addition of all the different currents that are being drawn. So if you have a TV over there that's plugged in and you have a microwave over there and, and you have a computer here and there's three, there's three, uh, um, you know, 3D printers back here, each one of them is going to pull a certain amount of current. And like, like this says, each device in the circuit uses part of the total current. Uh, the total current is like, for instance, the rating of, of the total current coming to the house. How much, how much is that supply? You know, some houses are 100 amps, some houses are 200 amps, just depending on, on how it's set up, right? Um, and of course, there's more, more services available for bigger places and, you know, businesses, etc. Um, you know, machine shops have huge amount of current sources, um, and also higher voltages too. But that's a whole different, different ball of wax. So, so the current flowing out of the 120 volt source is 20 amps. If you have, um, let me see, uh, is 12 amps. A parallel circuit can be called a current divider. So, if the total current in this that's flowing out of here, you know, and throughout this whole circuit. If this one's pulling or, or drawing or, or there's, there's seven amps flowing through here, and then this other one, there's five amps flowing through here, the total current is the sum of both of these legs or both of these branches of the circuit. Um, so seven and five is 12, right? Let me plug this in. So that's that's how you calculate total current, and remember total current how we how we calculated it in uh, um, in, in series. The total current was the same throughout the circuit, right? Well, the different parts of the circuit here draw different amounts of current, so you have to you have to combine all those amounts. In this case, the refrigerator draws seven, the uh, the microwave draws five. The addition of them is the total current is 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 twelve amps in this case. So in these branches, um, let me see if I can get this a little bit better. In these branches, when a voltage, when 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 the voltage and the resistor is known, then Ohm's law can be used, right? Because you only need two of the Ohm's law uh, pieces, basically. If you know the resistance and you know the uh, the the current, you can calculate the voltage, right? Um, so when when a voltage or I mean voltage, I'm sorry, when a voltage and a resistor are known, Ohm's law can be used to calculate the current, because that's what we're after. We're after the current. Um, so for instance, um, meter two, right, which is, which is right here. What's the current? What's the current in this branch of the circuit? In other words, it going through here like this, right? 
what's what's that current well we kind of have to step back for a second and say okay this this looks this looks like a series circuit and, and it is in a sense because the current goes through this circuit right here right or part of it um so so you have uh you have five volts and and how do we know we have five volts here because if you follow this resistor over to here you can see that we've got five volts so we know we have five volts remember how you guys were calculated voltage calculating voltage drop and you were struggling with voltage drop well here it's gonna be a lot easier you're gonna have the voltage drop and you've got the resistance so with that being known voltage divided by resistance equals current in this case five volts which we said we we knew we had divided by 100 ohms hey 50 milliamps so that's the current in this part of the circuit. Now, moving over to meter three, the same thing basically applies. We just have different numbers to work with. We're still looking at voltage divided by resistance, which equals current. So through this part of the circuit, because it'll come out like this, it'll go like this. The current will flow through here, flow through there, flow through there, and back here for this part of the circuit. Um, this current, is, is the same thing. 5 volts divided by 220 ohms, 22.7 milliamps. So the total current that this battery is sourcing, in other words, the total current that's flowing through the whole circuit, the current goes like this, splits up here, some of it comes over here, then it comes back here, then it joins back over here, and it and it it makes a complete circle back to back to the source. This this current and this current is the addition of both of those currents or this current i'm sorry is the addition of this current and this current which is 50 milliamps and 22.7 milliamps and as you can see there in this one so the total current of the parallel parallel circuit is the sum of the two branch circuits so we looked we looked and found this one we looked and we found this one we did the calculations this one's 50 milliamps this one's 22.7 milliamps Notice that right here, before it splits to this branch and to this branch, it's 72.7. Because this resistance and because of this resistance, and notice how I'm saying this, because of the resistances, because of the loads in each circuit, there's going to be different currents drawn through those, those loads. And in this case, 50 milliamps goes this way, 22.7 milliamps comes here, and then they, when they come back, they join back up again, and, and thus the same thing as it's being sourced or being provided. You have 72.7 milliamps available because of the voltage you have, the voltage drop here. Because see, this is 5 volts here, and this is 5 volts here, right? So that's, that's a given. This is 5 volts here. So you know, you know you're able with a 5 volt supply with these two uh, parallel resistances have 72.7 milliamps. So the total current of the parallel circuit is the sum of the two branch circuits. The total current of meter 1 is equal to the current of meter of, of, of R3, which is meter 3, plus the current of resistor four, which is meter three. Did I say that right? Let me say it again. Total current, meter one, which is this one, equals the current of resistor three, which is this one, which is meter two, plus the current of resistor four, which is meter three. So these two currents are added up to be the, the total current. So the total current is equal to 50 milliamps plus 22.7 milliamps, which is equal to 72.7 milliamps. Any questions? And I mean it, any questions? Even you, Dan, I, I, I would imagine that, that you would kind of, you know, uh, know this, I guess, but remember, no, no question is, is, is too dumb, except the question you don't ask. All right, if no questions, if, if questions, I'll back up. I'll keep 
keep mowing along, mow, mowing along, I'll keep going along. So in a parallel circuit, the voltage is the same. And this is, this is a fact about parallel circuits. In a parallel circuit, the voltage is the same for each component and each branch divides the source current. So the total available current splits up in the branches, but the source voltage is, is the same. Well, that was quick, huh? Part of parallel circuits one. So really, that's, that was the whole point of this whole document, that in the parallel circuit, the voltage is the same for each component, and each branch divides the source current. No questions, I, I, I guess. So let's go to document two, parallel circuit. This time we're going to talk about resistance in a parallel circuit. So um, parallel circuits can be considered a current divider. In circuit one, the current leaving the power supply, 73 milliamps, is divided into the branch circuit with 50 milliamps and 23 milliamps. Excuse me. So, so what we got here is pretty much the same thing that we had in the other one. We've got a 5 volt source, we've got 5 volts here, and 5 volts here. We, we know that. It's, it's, it's one of the, the laws of parallel circuits, you might say. This uh, 73 milliamps is divided in, in, is divided in this branch and in this branch. Because this, this 100 ohm resistor, because it, it has a 5 volt uh, uh, source voltage, you know, voltage, um, I mean, current is voltage divided by resistance, right? So we have 5 volts right here, and we have 100 ohms. That is 50 milliamps. I mean, that's basic Ohm's law. Just the same as it was in, in the series circuit, because in essence, this is a series circuit. These, this is actually two series circuits put together, but they're put together in parallel. Um, so whatever, whatever current they both pull is, is, is what, what they split up, basically. One part of the circuit and the other part of the circuit. So, so here, um, on this one, again, current is voltage divided by resistance. We've got 5 volts here divided by 220 ohms, which... Calculating my mind is 23 milliamps, right? Um, so, so that's that's kind of it, basically. I mean, there's not there's not much much uh, uh, magic in it other than those basic facts. The source voltage is the same, and the current is split. the 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 total current, the the source current. So, parallel resistance. Um, if, if, we, if we look at parallel resistance, so, so in circuit 2, 5 volts is connected to the 68.77 ohm resistor. The current through the resistor is 72.7 milliamps. Very simply put, right? We've got 5 volts right here. And its, it's current is equal to, to voltage divided by resistance. So the voltage is 5 volts divided by 68.77 ohms. That is 73 uh, milliamps. Basic Ohm's law, same as in series, because if you look at it, that is a series circuit, isn't it? So notice that in each of these circuits, the current leaving each of the power supplies is 73 milliamps. So here it's 73 milliamps, and here is 73 milliamps, right? Well, check this out. Check this out. So. We know we've got 5 volts here, and we know we have 5 volts there. We know we've got um, 5 volts here, and we know we have 5 volts there. This current, I'm, I'm sorry, this resistance is 68.77 ohms. If you take, and we'll, we'll talk about the, the calculating uh, the, the, uh, the, the total resistance of the circuit. You can calculate them individually, and you can see that you've got 50 milliohms or 50 milliamps and 23 milliamps 
for the addition of the 2 is 73. But the, the parallel resistance is, is this right here. Whenever you have resistances in parallel, the, the, the total resistance, unlike series circuits, the total resistance is actually smaller than the smallest of the, of the resistors. In this case, the smallest resistor is, is 100 ohms. But notice here that the total resistance is 68. This one's 220, right? So, so basically, the resistance is actually less. So how do we solve for this parallel resistance? Okay, so in a series circuit, the total resistance was found by simply adding the resistor values. You know, you would add one, the other. But remember, the current was flowing one into the other, into the other, into the other. So the resistance actually stacked up, right? Uh, as if you were to put valves all the way, you know, in, in, in series, right? Um, so, but the total resistance in a parallel circuit is not found that way. Uh, it's found by adding the, the values of the resistor. It's not, it's not found by adding the values of the resistors. I'm sorry. The, the total resistance here isn't 320 ohms. Um, as, as we saw, it was, what, 68, 68.77, right? So the total resistance of a parallel circuit, and this is where we start calculating math. This is, this is a, uh, a formula that you will have to know. You will have to know this formula. And there'll be other formulas as we get a little more complicated into this. So the total resistance of a parallel circuit with just two resistors is found by, by the formula R1, times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. You need to learn that, you need to learn that, uh, uh, that formula. And that is what's called R, or, or, or uh, resistance total, or, or, or R sub T, or total resistance in the circuit. So the total resistance of circuit 1, which was um, resistor 1 times resistor 2 plus or divided by resistor 1 plus resistor 2, right? That calculation comes out to 68.75 ohms. So that's how you figure out if you have two resistors. Now, equivalence resistance. Circuit 1 has two resistors, 100 ohms and 220 ohms. So using the formula, the result of the equivalent resistance is, uh, is used to solve for the total current flowing through the power supply. In other words, how much the power supply is, is, is giving out. So once we have the, the total resistance or equivalence, equivalent, equivalent resistance, we can figure out what that current is. So if we know the voltage, what's the voltage? Well, the voltage was 5 volts, right? So the 5 volts divided by the 68.75 ohms is 73 milliamps. And if you notice, that's what we have. We have 73 milliamps, right? So we calculated it as if this was a little circuit and this was a little circuit, and then we added them up. Hey, it came out to 73 milliamps. Then we went over here and we took the voltage divided by the equivalent resistance and that gave us the current of 73 milliamps. So here's, here's another example. So what is the current flowing out of the power supply if resistor 1 is 470 ohms and resistor 2 is 680 ohms? Well, simply put, uh, we, we find the total resistance first. That's the first thing we have to do. What is, what is the resistance of, of that circuit right there? What, what is the resistance of that circuit? We could, we could take and, and do this one here. Mm, pardon me. We could take and do the current here, and do the current here, and add them up. But that's not what we're wanting to do. We're wanting to find out through this formula right here what that equivalent resistance is. In this case, it's 470 times 680 divided by 470 plus 680. And that's, that's what it's showing here, which when you do the calculation, it comes out to 277 ohms. So, so next, we'll find the current. So 7 volts, which is what we have here, right? We've got 7 volts, divided by 277.9 ohms. 
quarter of an amp. Um, 25 milliamps. Sorry, not, not a quarter of an amp. 25 milliamps. Um, quarter of an amp would have been what? 0.25 amps, right? Or 250 milliamps. This is, this is 25 milliamps. Um, but if you take that 7 volts divided by the equivalent resistance, comes out to that. Um, so remember that in a parallel circuit, the circuit is, is a current divider. The current flows through here, and the current flows through here. Um, 25 milliamps. We've got, we've got 50 milliamps going through this one. And we've got 10 milliamps going through this one, thus 25 milliamps. So we can check it back and forth by checking the, 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 the smaller circuit, or we can use the equivalent resistance. And usually the equivalent resistance is what we want to use. So, so a quick check for total resistance. The total resistance will always be, and this is, this is a fact, this is, this is uh, one of the rules for, for, uh, for parallel circuits. The total resistance will always be small, the smaller value than the smallest branch resistor. In the example above, the smallest value is 470. The total resistance is 277 ohms. So it must be smaller than that, than the 470 ohms. So, with that being said, that was short and sweet and quick. And I know that I know there's some catching up that's that's going on, but what needs to take place at this point is this lab needs to be completed here and i guess i've got it uh here it is right there this lab needs to be completed and it's pretty much what we just did okay we're going to be asked to place a 1k this is if, you, if you're following along at home this is going to be your homework right we're going to place a 1k and a 2.2k on, on the breadboard and feed 10 volts into it then we're going to calculate what the total resistance is. How do we calculate this total resistance? Well, do we add it up? No, we don't add it up. It's, uh, it's, it's R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. So when you figure that up, whatever that comes out to, right? Uh, I guess, I guess I'll, I'll kind of do it. it. It'll be, it'll be a, a I want you guys to do it, but um, but it'll be for practice, right? This is, this is, come on, Mr. Calculator. All right, so let me let me close this out. So we have a thousand ohms, one thousand, because one k is a thousand ohms times. 2200 ohms that comes out to what 3200 right so 3200 on the top and then at the bottom it's it's a thousand plus 2.2 or 2200 right and this this calculator tell you what let me let me do it this way let me, let me bring up a calculator bring up a calculator so so we've got we've got 1000 times 2200 and that comes out to that right there right let's do it again 1000 times 2200 ohms that comes out to that right there. Now I'm going to do a memory plus and put it into the calculator so that I don't have to retype that number. But what I am going to do is I'm going to take and um, figure out what the bottom one is. Now in this case, in this case, it's 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 a thousand plus twenty two hundred, right? Which is thirty two hundred. Okay. So if I do a memory recall, I'll bring back that number that I had, which was the top. 
Then I'm going to divide that by 3,200. And I should get the total resistance of 687.5 ohms. So at that point, 687 ohms goes right there. So my next step is, what's the total current? Well, current is equal to voltage divided by resistance, or in this case, the, the total resistance. Um, so voltage is 10, right, divided by the, the, the total resistance in the circuit. And uh, let, me, let me copy this. So, so 10 divided by, and I'm going to control V it, and then hit equals again. And that gives me that right there. Is that correct? Somebody, somebody check me because, because I don't have a. This is this is the uh, this is the calculator that I've got right now, and it doesn't have any batteries in it. So, um, but that should be right, right? So the total current should be about fourteen point five uh, milliamps. Let me let me try with this one again. Um, uh, Stop asking me to pay for stuff. And so we said we said it was 10 volts voltage divided by resistance. 10 volts. Um, I'm just going to check here. Divided by, and it was what six? See, I forgot now. Yeah, it was 687 divided by 687.5. And this one comes out to 14.5, uh, 14.5454. So the current then is 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 a uh, 14.5454554, uh, right? So now with that being said, um, what's the current through resistor one, and what's the current through resistor two? It, this this at this point becomes just a series. A series problem. We know we have 1,000 ohms. We know we have 10 volts. 10 volts divided by 1,000 ohms is what? Is it 10 milliamps? 10 volts divided by 1,000 volts. Oh, I mean uh, ohms. 10 volts divided by 1,000 is 10 volts divided by 1,000. I don't know why I wasn't using that one is 10 milliamps, right? So we know we've got 10 milliamps going through here. So what's what's the other current that's that's going through th this resistor? Well, 10 ohms, uh, I'm sorry, 10 volts divided by 2200 ohms. There's our 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 4 5 or milliamps, our 4.5454554 4, 4, 5, 4 milliamps, which is which is it was what 14, right? So, so adding these two equals the total current. Anyway, I'm not going to go through all of these, but as you can see, there's, there's a, you know, you put, you put the, uh, the meter here, and you should get that current there or something close. So now we're going to measure it basically. So that is, like I said, I'm not going to go through the whole thing. Um, that is the, the lab. Just one lab. That's that's all we're gonna, at least at least right now. That's all we're gonna do. Just one lab. Just to kind of get you, get you flowing as far as parallel circuits. So anyway, with with that being said, um, that can be found in module five. And once once the video uploads, I'll go ahead and put it in the lab like the other. Um, like the other uh, videos are. And uh, so with that, folks, thank you for stopping by. Um, thank you for watching the video. Uh, as you know, you this is, the, this is the, the lecture part of, but if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Uh, you know how to get a hold of me. Um, and of course, come on into the lab to catch up on some labs. And with that being said, hey, 
no matter what you do, do it just for fun. You guys have a great, great day. And I guess I got to figure out how to how to end the stream now. Ah, oh, there's the end the stream button. Anyway, thank you so much. Bye bye. Yes, end it. Ha, ha, ha.